problem in my throat uh, the last couple of days shane i don't know what's going on because i was just talking to you with no problem uh it's 10 o'clock mountain time it's thursday february 11th 2021 and that means it's time for tom and shane and uh hey we're happy to have you here with us today today's topic we're going to talk about small business failure three reasons you'll fail and how to avoid them is our topic of the day. But before we get to that, of course, we've got to let you know that if you're watching us on YouTube right now, hey, you need to subscribe, man. I mean, we need subscribers. We've picked up a couple the last few days, Shane. So uh, we're uh, getting there slowly but surely. So we appreciate uh, you subscribing and uh, watching us online. And, of course, click the uh, notification bell, and you'll always uh, be advised of when we have a new podcast. And also like us and leave a comment, because Facebook likes that kind of stuff. And we're also on Patreon. If you want to support the show monetarily, we would appreciate that very much, because we do have costs to put this thing on. And uh, we would certainly appreciate your help uh, for $3 a month. Uh, you'll be featured in all of our podcasts. Your name, if you want your name. Uh, your business name, if you want your business name, or your website, if you want your website. We will put any or all of those up and um, and every podcast, and it'll also be on the replays and all of that as well. So pretty good deal. So uh, you could do worse than that. So, And uh, also, uh, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, of course, and uh, we'll take on a business topic every week and uh, help you with your small business. Ba- small ba- small business, but home-based business or whatever. And for more tips, of course, go to our website at TomAndShane.com. And we have articles and tips over there uh, as well. So and check those out. And also, if you missed any of our past shows, uh, they are all at KMMSAM.com. KMMSAM.com. You'll see it next to Shane's name there. And, uh, Go over there and you can check out any of our past podcasts or our radio shows, which are audio. And, of course, we're on radio every Saturday. And uh, so uh, don't forget uh, to do that. So, yeah, we're on. (laughs) Got them backwards. We're on radio every Saturday, 8 to 11, Mountain Time. Click listen now at uh, KMMSAM.com. And uh, please share that with your with your friends. So, yeah, that's kind of where we are at the moment Shane so good morning how you doing I'm doing great and uh, uh, a wiser man than I once said uh, to be successful you have to learn not how to fail and that's, uh, for so sure. that, that's the topic we want to cover today because actually uh, uh, failure is a, a wicked barrier to your success but it's also a learning moment so the key to uh, running an efficient effective and successful business is not making the mistakes that you may be able to get advice from from other people and not have to do it all on your own. Very uh, true. A lot of time talking to older people who've been in business and can give you some great advice and pointers how not to make mistakes. So uh, we're going to go through those today, and Tom will take it from there. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, we um, um, Thomas Edison. Uh, we talked about talking about inventing the light bulb. He said, uh, no, I know a thousand ways not to invent a light bulb. <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's what we're covering today. Well, today we want to talk primarily to those of you who are thinking about starting a business, because this is a big challenge. You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to do some, probably some monetary investment. Uh, you might have tools and equipment. Uh, you might have a bunch of computer stuff. Um, you know, I mean, there, there's going to be some things involved for you to start your business with no money coming in. And it's a big step for a lot of people. And also there's a lot of fear involved when you, when you uh, tackle something like that. 
And I want you to think about fear for a moment. Fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. That's what fear is, false evidence appearing real. Unless you got a uh, uh, man-eating tiger directly in front of you, most fear is in the mind. It's not <clears throat> in the physical world. So, um, you know, you, you're thinking of all the uh, reasons that you can or can't uh, do something. So that's what we want to talk about today, that if you're starting a, uh, a new business or thinking about a business, because in the back of your mind, you're going to go, oh, man, am I going to fail? What's going to happen here? Um, am I really, can I do this is maybe one of the biggest fears that we all have. Can we, can we do this? Now let's talk about the reason you feel that way. And that is because of something I call forced discipline. And Shane, we've all had this, right? <laughs> we've all, uh, <clears throat> you know, you're born. Yes, everyone's yeah. Yeah. You're born. Uh, your parents uh, tell you what to do. You go to school. Your teachers tell you what to do. Uh, you go to work. Uh, boss tells you what to do. You go in the military. Uh, officers tell you what to do. and we're conditioned almost from birth to let others make our decisions. And, you know, we just kind of follow along. Now we learn from those decisions that are made for us, but uh, we, um, we also, um, you know, we also have a, an issue with, um, you know, with uh, um, how we, how we deal with this when finally uh, the hat is on us and we were the last, we're the person making the decisions. And for a lot of people, that's tough. Oh, absolutely. It is. And as you were taking, we, when you were talking about fear, uh, the, you have to come to the reality that fear is actually an emotion. And we've talked about this before. There are a lot of emotions you have to learn to mod, uh, modernize in some cases and manage. And, and when it comes to making decisions, I'd like to remind you, certainly those of you with, with children, that uh, when you're out walking and you come to a stop sign, how many times do you remember telling your child, look both ways before crossing the street? That's true. <laughs> it's a great analogy to what we're talking about. You have to have the discipline. And as a parent, you want to carry it on to mm -hmm. your children to protect them. And so they don't make mistakes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that we, it is made for us we do learn from those things but um we we often you know it, when i bought my first house i went to my dad to talk about it because he had bought a house you know so um so that was uh, you know you want to you want to do that and that will bring us to our next uh, option uh reason two you may fail and that is um associations so as i mentioned i went to my dad when i bought my first house because he had bought one before and he told me how to you know what to look for how to do it yada 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 because he had done it before and i could talk to other homeowners too you know i didn't not just i could talk to my older brother and you know whoever so there those experiences i could rely on but when you're starting a business, if it's something that your parents haven't done or uh, your brothers and sisters haven't done or someone else, they are unqualified to give you advice. They just are because That's right. they don't know. And, and most people that come to the decision about making a business, whether you're a tradesperson and have the equipment or your suit and, uh, uh, you know, work in an office or at home now. Uh, the, the reality is, is that you found that you're successful, you're doing well, you pick up on uh, what you're doing, you're enjoying what you're doing, and that, uh, you know, the people around you, are, you know, aren't as committed as you are. You, you, you know, being committed to something shows up well uh, with others. So when you get to that point, all of a sudden you start reasoning, which you should, that I might be able to do this on my own. And not only that. I'll be on my own and I can learn to live to work and not work to live. So I, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of that. And, it, and it's an important aspect of what we're talking about today. That's it. 
Uh, from our uh, listeners or watchers, I should say, uh, Ken wants to know, why do you two do dudes wear hats inside a building? Well, um, well, one thing, I'm from Montana, a change from uh, Canada. We wear hats uh, in and out, inside and out. And uh, for me, it's just a hair issue, you know. It's early in the morning here. I don't want to. I don't want to have to do. I don't want to have to comb my hair and whatever. So for me, it's just a. It's just a uh, hair issue. So. And for so me, it's a look. It's a look that uh, uh, creates an uh, an anticipation for those that in, enjoy our shows, because yeah. in most cases, when you're dealing with business, it gets it can get a bit stuffy. So we see it as a way for yeah. it to make people comfortable. Um, most people, particularly in the trades, they wear a hat all day long, inside or out. So, yeah, um, I'm, yeah, I'm just, just yeah. Well, when we started this, we were wearing shirts and ties, and we thought, yeah, I don't, <clears throat> that's a little much, you know. So, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't do that. So that's <laughs> that's where we are there. So, all right, getting back to uh, our topics, as we we're talking about associations, yeah, you. Yeah, don't ask the guy on the bar stool next to you about your business. Um, you know, if, if I wanted to learn to play golf, I'm not going to go ask a bowler or a tennis pro. You know, I'm going to I'm going to ask a golf pro how to play golf because they're qualified to advise me and that's one of the things about associations. Now, the other thing that happens with associations is that you you know, this is really hard because if you're successful, Shane, you're probably going to lose some friends. You're probably going to lose some friends. Well, we have talked about this before that, you know, there are three aspects to your life, your personal, your social, and your professional. And in each of them, you have different types of associations, uh, whether they're personal associations, meaning friendships or, or acquaintances, or being a member to the country club. If it's a social association, it might be church. It might be, uh, a, a gathering, uh, a type, a, a thing that you do for the community. And, and if it's a professional association, it might be men's club like the Kiwanis or other men's clubs that are out there for you to participate in. All of these are important singly um, as networking. And uh, we put a big onus on networking uh, because that is a big leg in the stool for success. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Linda thinks our hats are cool. So, uh, go for it, Linda. <laughs> we appreciate that very much. Thanks. Thanks so much uh, for, for that. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, let's see, Shane. Also, um, the other thing, uh, I want uh, when I talk about, you're going to lose friends. Here's, here's something that's going to happen is that, you know, um, if you're successful and your friends are not, then all of a sudden uh, something's going to happen because if you're successful with your business, you're going to have some money and your friends are not. So uh, the first time you offer to buy drinks or the first time you uh, offer to pay for something, uh, your friends are going to say, Hey, big man, I, you know, I don't need your help. I don't need your charity. Uh, you know, so just be prepared that in some cases, uh, if you're successful and it's not that they're, uh, it, it isn't anything about you. It's about them. They, they see your success and they say, boy, why didn't I do that? Why, why didn't I, uh, do the work? Why didn't I do all the study that you've done and all this and learning and all the things uh, that you've put into this business, all the sweat equity and everything like that, because I'm not willing to do that, or at least at this point in my life, I'm not willing to do it. So that's right. You're going to, you're going you're gonna to develop new associations. So, you know, some people are, are not going to understand your success and others are, they're going to be grateful for you. So one of my first rules, rule 101 in the area of business, part of your life, and your social and personal life is very simple. They're givers and takers in this world. And, they, you know, they fall in both forms. Uh, some are more takers and less givers. And some are great givers and less takers. So you can identify people now instantly. In fact, sit back. List, having said that, sit back and think about it. Think about the people that you know that are givers and takers. 
So yeah. a great rule to follow with regards to friendship isn't hard when you look at it from the standpoint of, of giving and taking. Because if someone isn't happy for you, they're not your friend. And the, one of the first things you should learn in this life is that you want to be around people that are happy for you. Your family should always be happy for you. And if you have siblings that aren't, you're not going to be a good friend. Now, your parents should be happy for you, and most are. But there are some that aren't, and they're not good friends. <laughs> yeah, Bill, so learn from this reality. Givers and takers. Excuse me. Learn no, from this ahead. reality. There are givers and takers, and the people that are the happiest for you are really your friends. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, Bill Gates' uh, parents were unhappy that uh, when he dropped out of school to pursue this computer crap uh, that he that he had that he had in his uh, had in his brain and uh, you know i can understand that that's again it's a, a condition of the person uh, judging you or looking at you or you're looking at your business uh they're they don't know all that's involved they don't know what's well, what that, that's right to some degree. You know, the fathers with sons are always particular and like them to follow in their footsteps, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But this was this was interesting because this was a tiger mom. In the case of Bill Gates, his mother was an administrator in a regional bank, and uh, she was actually quite happy to help finance and and uh, through her bank as he started to expand and grow his business. So. He, you know, he always had the white privilege that you hear about every day. But, you know, that's what creates the drive and, and in success in, in, in males. It's mother that is, uh, that is strong, supportive, and demanding. Uh, there is a book, as I said, uh, you heard me say at the beginning, you know, the Chinese tiger that a woman wrote about raising her children several years ago. New York bestseller carried the news for you know several cycles a couple of weeks because it was so specific and direct um, about how mothers are are the bulwark of raising males most males are closer to their mom most girls are closer to their fathers so it's a great lesson in life and uh, follow that uh, concept and you'll see you're normal like everyone else yep excellent points yep um the other, <clears throat> the other thing we want to talk about is something that's really hard also uh, for, uh, for people to understand, and that is you've got to have a vision of the future. And when I do seminars for startup businesses and things like that, I always tell people, walk around now like your business is successful. You know, feel it. Test That's right. Drive it, the, it, it's yeah. the beginning of our program. We talked about business plans, financial plans, uh, um, and and sales plans. <clears throat> but in the corporate plan, you know, the preamble should always be the corporate vision, and it should be a simple one line, ten words that that you come up with of of where you want to go. What's the vision of the company you're going to set up and the business you want to pursue? It's you know. There are many famous, famous things for you to consider, but one of the favorite of mine's Bill Clinton in 1992, when he was running for president, carried around a sign that said, it's the economy, stupid. So everywhere he went, hotels, planes, buses, whatever, trains, uh, cars, he always had in front of him a little sign that says, you know, it's the economy, stupid. Well, that was his vision. And he believed the only way that he could get elected was to make the American pe people um, understand and come to believe that it's the economy that had to be the concern in the election. So this is an, uh, an example of, of what we're speaking to, but yes, vision is huge. It carries you a long way, especially in those difficult days of decision-making, uh, those difficult days of uh, mistakes, uh, those difficult days of no success. You know, no one shows up as a customer or you can't find one. You always get paid last when you have your own company. So you have to have a vision of making sure that happens. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know when, um, you know, Bill Gates was, uh, you know, working on Microsoft in the garage, if he thought it was going to be what it turned out to be or Steve Jobs and Wozniak 
or uh, Elon Musk or any of these people, uh, you know, they had to start somewhere. They started just as a regular person and they made history or made things change. Um, you know, did they make every right decision along the way? Of course not. But the fact is that they they did see their business not as it is today, but as it will be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, whatever. At least that's they had some semblance of where they wanted to go. And as I as I mentioned before, uh, you know, when you walk around, walk around like your business is successful. When you talk to people, your business is brand new, but talk to them like it's been in business 25 years. That's right. You know, and Bill Gates and Elon Musk are a great comparison. Uh, met one, not the other. But Bill Gates, uh, his vision was monopoly. He, he saw the opportunity of a monopoly in a new industry, and it was. But uh, Elon Musk is different. He, he had three companies that he developed uh, and sold, you know, in, internet companies for billions. He's a visionary. He sees the future. He, he, he envisions. He's just, he doesn't just have a vision. He envisions the future. And the greatest men of capitalism and success, particularly in our countries in the last hundred years, have been visionaries. And that's why when Tom started out talking about Thomas Anderson, that's what he was. Ended up the single most person, the one person with the single most number of patents in history to this day. And that's because he never stopped thinking about the future and, and what could be. And uh, so what could be is mm -hmm. your own company, maybe small, maybe local. But you know what? It's enough to take care of everybody that's around you and for you to have a managed lifestyle. How great is that? Getting up yeah. every day and, uh, you know, living to work. Yeah, there are two books I can recommend to you. One is The Magic of Thinking Big by David Swartz. And the other is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Both of those are, uh, Shane's familiar with both books, I know. And uh, Napoleon Hill particularly uh, is a business, was a business visionary on how to, uh, how to do these things so that we're talking about today. But the, uh, the common denominator, I guess, of all these uh, things that we're talking about today is that they're, they're all emotional, they're all internal. You know, it's how you process the information that comes into you. And as I said earlier with associations and forced discipline and all the other things we're talking about is that you, you try to get the best information you can from the most qualified people you can. You know, if you, if you take trade magazines, let's say you want to be a woodworker or something like that, and you're taking trade magazines and you read about somebody who's successful, call them up, ask them, can can I spend five minutes with you picking your brain, you know, and learn from people who are qualified to give you advice? Yeah. So a single most important book that drove me to be uh, an individual and wanting to work on my own. And I have since I was six years old, started my first business at six year old, six years old to bird clean. Odd Magdingo, the greatest salesman in the world. Mm -hmm. 28 page book. Yeah. Carried around with me everywhere through grade school and high school. And um, I literally would read that book as much as the good book every day because it was so it was so positive and it gave me, um, you know, a great understanding of the world. And then another book that I read, which was great in negotiating and and doing the uh, suit work I did was The Art of War. Um, the, the Art of War is a book you have to find and, and you have to own and you have to read it because it is visionary. Um, yeah. A great Chinese general 3,000 years ago, and it's yeah. been used by every military since then to train uh, their uh, leaders and uh, their officers. So those are two books, uh, The Art of War and mm -hmm. The Greatest Salesman in the World, that I recommend for you to get started. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, yeah, I, I don't have Art of War because I didn't want to learn Chinese to read it. I know, I know. Okay. And uh, uh, the other thing we need to talk about is uh, follow the signs to business success. And, what, and this comes a little bit into what we're talking about. When when an uh, airline pilot or a ship captain takes off from New York City to go to Europe, 
they can't see their destination for 99.9 percent of the of the trip you know they they know where they're going and they're using all the instruments and everything at their uh, disposal even the ship captains uh, of old compasses and sextants and whatever uh, would get them across the ocean or get them to uh, places that they wanted to go and um, this is the same with your with your business you see that vision off in the future but you don't really see that success immediately uh, some businesses you will if you got a great idea and people you know people embrace it yeah bam go for it pet rock you know <laughs> might be an example of that or you know something uh, like that so yeah so if i may have your permission for uh, an oxymoron of my own all right so one of the, the, or rather the first business I was in was the restaurant industry. Uh, two pieces of advice. If you're going to have a private uh, restaurant, in, in, and I'm talking about in the sense of, of not a... Um, uh, not a chain. A chain type restaurant. But your own private, buy the property. If, and because the difficulty in succeeding in that business is so great if, if that should you do so, and you're there for 20 or 30 years, that's your retirement. The, the oxymoron is that in the restaurant business, you can make a lot of money. In the restaurant business, you can be very successful and like make a lot of money. But, ah, oh, the oxymoron, you can lose more money than you can make. Think about that again. You can make a lot of money, but you can lose more than you can make. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, uh, here in Montana, we've got a perfect example of that. Uh, Jeff Riggs, who owns a North Fork restaurant um, here in town, it, it used to be a Wheat Montana restaurant. Uh, they they were going to try to fan franchise restaurants around the country because Wheat Montana is a big name here in, uh, in Montana. And um, that failed. He was one of the first owner operators, I guess. And uh, Jeff... Uh, Jeff put together a business plan and exactly what you're talking about, Shane, he wanted to own the land. 11 banks turned him down. 11 banks before the 12th bank said yes. Now, if you have that kind of fortitude, and that's what I'm talking about when you're a startup business, you know what you want. He used to sit out in front of restaurants and count people going in and coming out. You know, how many people went in, what time of day was it, had all this in his business plan, uh, parking. Uh, you know, he tried to think of everything. And every time he was turned down by a bank, he tried to find out the reason why and went back and refined his plan again. But, you know, you would think a lot of people would have stopped after maybe five turned downs or at least six. Eleven guys turned down by 11 different banks. Now he's got three restaurants in three different towns. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a great comparison. Um, large chain foods uh, look at the uh, average per ticket, uh, you know, the average right. sale per person. Uh, for Taco Bell, it's around four fifty, And for McDonald's, it's around $6. But you go to the other end of the scale with full service, um, you know, settings uh, mm -hmm. in a fine ho a restaurant in, in a hotel in, in Las Vegas. And you know their 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 ticket averages anywhere from thirty five dollars a person to eighty five dollars. Yeah. So you know, and their business plan, their cash flow, their marketing plan, it's all predicated on that. So th these are the types of things we want to discuss with you, so you feel comfortable in reviewing the things that are necessary to understand to make that giant leap into the future on your own and uh, enjoy life a little bit more. You, there's a lot of joy in success, in, in, in particular, when it's yours. Well, that's the big thing. You know, I, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people feel comfortable. Well, I'll be my own boss. Well, <laughs> uh, you may regret that thinking that when you get started, because it may be 18 hour days you're putting in. You know, you're thinking about your business all the time and you do have to, uh, while you're starting your business, you're, you may have a job and, uh, you know, you're starting your own business and boy, you, you know, you've got a wife, you've got kids or vice versa. You got a husband, you got kids, whatever it is. And, um, you know, you're, 
you you you've really got to walk a, a balancing uh a wire uh to juggle all these balls at once and getting your family on board uh with you is critical i think in startup businesses because in many cases you're going to start the business at home you're going to be in a corner of the bedroom or whatever uh or you know spare room or a closet or something basement <laughs> you name it uh, that's where you're going to end up and uh you know you it's tough to juggle all these things and that's why we're telling you these three things that it's important that you become disciplined yourself but not at the expense of your family and everything else uh associations get get uh, from uh, get qualified uh, advice from the uh, correct people and also have a vision of where you're going to go and get your spouse or whoever your partner, whoever it is on board with where you're going. That's right. And, and there's an old expression, you know, if you fall off your horse, get off, dust yourself off and, and, and get on it. And yeah. to me, that's more of a, a personal expression. And, and I'll tell you why. To me, it's if you fall off your elephant, get up and dust yourself up. And walk up to him and he will turn up a leg so you can climb back on. Your business can always help you stay happy. And it can help you want to make it work. So it, it isn't that, it, it, you know, sometimes governments say it is a thing. But it's your thing. And uh, you made it happen. So never be bashful. Never be scared. Never be fearful. You can ride that elephant. All the way through the Alps to Rome. There you go. <laughs> All right. Sounds sounds good to me. Well, um, maybe the, the last word on business failure, the, the best advice we can give you is um, if you, Davy Crockett said it best. If you think you're right, go ahead. <laughs> if you think your business is a viable business and you have good reason to think that and the numbers back you up, then by all means, go for it. Don't let, don't let anyone negative stand in your way of, of your success. Go out there and, you know, you're going to be knocked down a lot. And, you know, uh, as they say, uh, it's not getting knocked down. It's how many times do you get up? So that's, that's the uh, last word that we, we want to impart on you uh, this morning. Shane, uh, your last words for the folks. Yes, be happy, be safe, live in the moment because life is. Well, I wasn't going to say goodbye. I was going to say last moments about what we're talking about. No, I've already <laughs> said it. So yeah. live in the moment. Uh, you know, there are a lot of moments in our lives. Some are forever, but it's important that you do. And uh, please live to work. It, it you'll you'll find you so much yourself so much happier, and coming home to your family happy is what they want to see. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. If you're uh, watching us on YouTube, <clears throat> by all means, subscribe. Uh, click that notification bell uh, down below. Uh, that'll be down in the uh, down in the corner there. Uh, you know, point down there or wherever it is. Yeah, it's down there under the video. <laughs> Just click subscribe. The notification bell will pop up. Click on that, and you'll be notified Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, 11 Central, 12 uh, Eastern, uh, uh, 9 Pacific. So. Uh, Hey, we're, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, so uh, like us there. Uh, also, if you'd like to support the show monetarily, we do have some expenses in putting this on, the software and all the things that go with it, and the mics and the mixers and uh, the computers and all that stuff that do this. We'd appreciate your, your support. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below on how you can do that and the special perks you will get if you do that uh, for, uh, with us and uh, whatever. And uh, we greatly, uh, we greatly appreciate that. And uh, let's see, um, what else do we have to do, Shane? I got to do something else here. <laughs> we go. I'll get it in a minute. Well, we just want to make sure that you join us worldwide <laughs> on the net at uh, kmsam.com on yeah. Saturday mornings. For me, <laughs> it's uh, seven to ten, and yeah. for Tom, it's eight to eleven. Uh, mm -hmm. We cover a lot of politics and money. And certainly yeah, there's do. a lot of that uh, right now happening. Not that it's any less than any other time, but it's always interesting. 
And yeah. uh, we have a call on both. So uh, you might find that fascinating. And you can also download it and enjoy mm -hmm. both our shows. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, watch or listen to any of our past shows at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast and you'll be taken right over there to uh, where all of our podcasts and everything are. As Shane mentioned, uh, we have a uh, political uh, slash business show because business and politics seem to go hand in hand. Whatever <laughs> politics is doing, business seems to react and, and back and forth uh, both ways. So we're uh, uh, we're happy about that. So we appreciate you uh, being here with us. And um, as always, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for listening and uh, watching us and um we will see you uh, well we won't see you will we we'll talk to you saturday <laughs> that's right we'll talk to you saturday on we'll the radio see you next tuesday, though. <laughs> yeah we will be back uh, live uh, next tuesday uh, live uh, here so uh, by all means we hope that uh, you'll be here so all right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. And hey, uh, just remember, folks, uh, all views are welcome here. And uh, if you think it there, there's a pretty good chance we're going to talk about it here. So we'll see everybody Saturday. We'll hear everybody. We'll talk to everybody Saturday on the radio, 8 to 11, Mountain Time, KMMSAM.com. Bye for now. <laughs>